if you uh, die and you say you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, because that's that's um, you know accept Jesus Christ into your heart, what happens to you then? If like after I died, I then I not after like, like you're you're in the process you're like about to die. Let's say I'm about to die, and and I truly have faith that God paid the paid the full penalty for me. Yeah. Then then I'll go to heaven. Hmm. Okay. Is that something that like is guaranteed to everybody? Like uh, if a rapist said it, would that happen? Yes. Ah. <laughs> um. I just it just seems I don't know, man. I don't want that rapist to go to heaven. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the example that Scripture uses is you, there are there are two lives. There's a first life and there's a second life. Let me give you this example. So there's a guy who committed murder, and he's in a he's in a free market trial where they are actually going to require that he be put to death. Um, the person who died, his family, they're the accusers. Everybody saw it happen. It's a really cut and dried, open shut case. You had. You had cameras, you had, let's say you had 10 people see it, and they're all at the at the trial to give uh, a testimony. And the, the murderer is standing there, he's convicted, they're literally about to take him out the back and do a hang him or a firing squad, whatever your, um, whatever would be a, an agreeable form of execution. And right before they're about to do that, the judge that's been listening to this entire case has compassion on the murderer. He sees that the murderer is totally broken over what he did. He wishes that he could, because he's going to be put to death and it's not going to get back the person that he killed. It's not going to bring him back to life. I know Walter Block talks about it. He's like, if we could run somebody through a machine uh, and take your life and give it back to the person that you killed, a reanimation machine, um, that would be great. But ultimately, the reason that we kill people is because the person that killed like their life is forfeit. They stole a life. They should owe a life. Mm -hmm. Um, what if, so this guy's about to be let out. What if the judge steps down from his thing and he says, you know what? Kill me instead. And I want you to let the murderer, the murderer go. Ah, is that permissible? Uh, I don't think it would be. I don't think the insurance company that represents the victim would, would like that very much. <laughs> what do you think that that would do to the murderer? What what would he think about that? Well, the murderer would probably be very grateful, I guess, but do you think he's, do you think his life would change? Probably would, uh, but a good man life, a good man's life will also end in that process, right? Like the, the judge was probably a very good man or he could, he, he was, I guess in perspective he was, but, yeah, because he's not a murderer. He's a yeah, he's, he's the head of a conflict resolution firm. Maybe he took some bribes. I get that, but uh, beyond that, he probably never you know really violated an app too much, uh, or at least uh, hopefully not at all. Um, so the the judge was a good man. He sacrificed his life for this murder, and the murderer gets now free. You know, there's no charges against him because he took the took the crime. And now, what happens to the judge? Does he go to hell or heaven? The judge, the judge would die. I'm just keeping this to the the physical life, the here and now, for the oh, illustration. Okay, 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 okay. So the judge dies, and um, the murderer walks free from this. Right. I mean, I, honestly, I might kill him <laughs> if he killed uh, if he killed someone I knew, and he just like some, the judge was like, I sacrificed myself. But a you life know? has been paid. Like, let's say, let's say somebody wants to buy your dinner. Okay. If let's say I owe twenty bucks for my dinner, and somebody else comes and says, Hey, you know, uh. Here, I, I want to pay this for you. Well, yeah, I mean, they're paying their debt, um, but in in the way of the uh, in the way of the, I guess the actor, the debt isn't really repaid if they don't get punished or if they don't die. Um, I Somebody think has to die. Yeah, it's a if, requirement if, of paying a so life. I think someone has to die, but I think that that specific actor owned their initiative, you know, and. In owning their initiative, they own the consequence of that initiative, and that consequence should be death. I I would say that it would if he wanted to go in and say I'll I'll die for him. I don't know what conflict resolution court would. Let's allow say him, the right? murderer was feeling so terrible about it that he turned himself in, and said, "I want you guys to put me to death." Like that's that's just that's fair. Like so that's that's the attitude that I have now because Christ did that for me. Um, there's an illustration. Um, in the Sermon on the Mount, if Jesus said, if somebody um, sues you and takes your shirt and the implication is there is that it's wrong, like so it's being 
stolen from you through the legal process that's being legally stolen from you, like tax money or something. Um, yeah. It's he says that your response is supposed to be you give him your jacket also. If somebody steal, sues you and steals your shirt, you give him your jacket. And the reasoning for that is because, okay, I know that this world, there is justice. So in the future, when, when justice is required of this guy who's stealing my shirt, he's mm-hmm. going to have to pay the shirt that he stole back, but then an additional item, right? Because that's the penalty. Yeah. I know this guy is going to need an additional shirt in the future, so I'm going to give it to him. And then I wouldn't have any problem with that person also then calling the authorities and saying, hey, I'm taking this guy to court. And so when you take it through the whole legal system, what ends up happening is that I get back both of my garments. I get my shirt and my jacket back and the other guy is out nothing whatsoever. And then the other guy, his debt's been paid. He's not a criminal anymore. He's not a felon. Um, His debt's totally wiped clean and I've lost nothing. I got back everything that was originally mine. And we can both go our many ways and maybe even become friends. I take him out to lunch. Hmm. In, in my uh, okay, so my discernment of it, how a, a private arbor, I guess, would uh, would have handle a situation like this. Um, they'd say, "All right, you know, John, John L. Um, you know, you're being charged with a capital crime. Uh, you murdered, you know, Susan, whatever. Her family's insurance company is prosecuting you." And then he says, "Oh no, this." This this guy over here, you know, he's really he feels bad for me and he wants to sacrifice himself. I don't think that insurance company would be like, yeah, let's do that. You know, it's it's kind of their choice because they're the prosecuting party too, and the conflict resolution firm would be like, yeah, we don't care. Who, like, like, I'm interested know? to to hear your answer. Who do you think would be offering insurance against people murdering? Like, I would ask. Okay, why do you have an insurance policy against murdering somebody? Are you planning on murdering somebody? Oh no, no. Well, the, the um. Okay, so the way I see decentralized justice is pretty. It's pretty interesting. I think that people will have insurance companies that will back them with security services, litigation firms. It'll be like a package deal, right? Litigation firms and um, security services, litigation firms. And of course, they'll have like their you know natural insurance over house, over life, and stuff like that. Kind of like um, being a member of CareFlight, where you have you pay like twenty five bucks a month, and if you ever need to get CareFlighted, instead of charging you thirty grand, it's it's free because you're a member. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so you're saying it's, the it's same like type that. of thing for insurance, legal insurance? Yeah, essentially, essentially. And then there's also you know they have connections to conflict resolution firms that they'll go to and stuff like that in case of an emergency and all that. Um, and that would be an insurance against a murderer. Because uh, they, they they'd have litigants that were experienced in some type of uh, uh, of conflict resolution like that, um, so I think that, that that would be how like you know um, I don't think they're planning on getting murdered or murdering. It's just like a safety net type thing. Like I never plan on my house burning down. You know, it just it might, 